Give to Barrett. Cut back over the middle of the 25 to the 20. Breaks a tackle to the 15. Stop, starts 10 5. Touchdown, Lions. Holy mackerel. Throws end zone. It is caught. What a play back there in the back of the end zone by TJ Hawkinson. You're listening to the One Pride Cast. Welcome into the One Pridecast. Team reporter Danny Rogers joining you now. We will have a little bit of a different format today. We're going to hear a lot from head coach Dan Campbell on his thoughts about week 16 in Atlanta. Plus, he's looking ahead to those Seattle Seahawks. Everyone you have to be prepared for on both sides of the ball. Mike O'Hara, DetroitLions.com writer, is going to join me with his bet MGM pick. And Aleem McNeil, rookie nose tackle, who just captured his second sack of the season, will also be joining me. Enjoy this one. Create a fun, unique, and unforgettable outing for a group of 10 or more at the next Lions home game. Visit DetroitLions.com backslash groups to purchase or contact us directly at 313-262-2222 to save on ticket prices, get priority locations, and receive a group giveaway item. Coach, this Seattle offense, 30% on third down last Sunday uh, in their last game. How can your defense continue to trim that number down when they go up against quarterback Russell Wilson and those Seahawks? Yeah, well, look, disrupt the receivers. All right, let me know. Let me start here. First, box Russell in, man. You got you to gotta box him in. You cannot allow him to escape, particularly to the perimeter, but even up inside. So you have to close it in on him. Don't give him a, a lane or an alley to get through and then disrupt these receivers. Those are the two things. If you can do that, you'll have success against these guys offensively. Coach Tyler Lockett, he had a quiet game last weekend. However, he's already eclipsed over 1,000 receiving yards so far this season. He's had three games this season where he's eclipsed over 140 yards in a single game. So when him and Russell Wilson are clicking, what does that duo look like? Yeah, listen, first of all, you can't let this guy out of the pocket, Russell Wilson. You know, we took... This is the guy, man, if you allow him to escape inside the pocket or outside the pocket, he's great with keeping his eyes downfield. And I swear, this is where most of these come up with Lockett is when there are these scramble drills. And uh, this is just a great look at it right here. He's going to look for him. He's going to find him. He's one of the first ones he's looking for when he's escaping, you know. Um, But that's why you got to keep this guy bottled up. And then, man, don't give up on the play downfield, man. you got to stay with your man, uh, particularly Lockett, because he can get behind you. Another receiver you have to be on the lookout for is DK Metcalf. He is right behind Lockett in terms of receiving yards so far this season. He had a touchdown last game. So when DK is finding the end zone, what does that look like? DK is an explosive, long, strong, uh, uh, agile athlete. And uh, look, this is third and 14. And you got press coverage. Of course, he's going to look over here. Russell does a good job with his eyes trying to hold the safety. But man, forget his eyes. Run over here and let's help right now. So this corner's got no help, but this is what happens, man. He's going to look for him. If he feels like he's got one-on-one, he's going to throw this over there to DK's side, and he's too big. And even if he's covered, he's not covered if it's one-on-one. So this guy's dangerous. Show your Lions pride by going authentic with gear from shop.detroitlions.com. For a great selection of T-shirts, hats, jerseys, and novelties with convenient flat-rate shipping right to your doorstep, Visit shop.detroitlions.com, your 24-7 home for Lions gear. You just heard from head coach Dan Campbell on those Seattle Seahawks. Up next, hear from nose tackle Aleem McNeil on his growth so far this season. Aleem, after your first training camp here with the Lions, nicknames like Twinkle Toes and Dancing Teddy Bear came out of it, but that was before you were hitting opposing quarterbacks um, and getting sacks in these big games. So how much have you grown since being a 20-year-old drafted to the NFL? Uh, I've grown a lot. Uh, Just being able to lean on guys and like Nick Williams and Michael Brockers, uh, guys like Frank, you know, just the guys older than me, I said all the time, you know, that's what's helped me along this process throughout the way. And uh, just being able to have those guys around me telling me all the different tricks and uh, different ways to get by things. You know, it helps me out a lot. So I've grown a ton since being here. 
you got your first sack of your career against Denver. And then your head coach, Dan Campbell, comes on this show, and he gave you some grief about your celebration afterwards. He said he didn't really know what you were doing. So do you think you've improved in that realm so far? Yeah, I knew exactly what I was doing. <laughs> but, yeah, um, a lot of people keep talking to me about the sack dance, too, because it's, it's like an inside thing at NC State. Uh, we used to do that in the locker room all the time, and the guys that came before us. So uh, that's where I got it from. One of my teammates uh, who actually used to play for the Broncos, Tyler Jones, I got it from him. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> you were able to use that celebration again in a, a sack against Atlanta. You were very thorough when you took reporters through it Monday. So can you break down that sack for us? Yeah, uh, so it was a call pressure we had. Uh, I'm not going to say the name of the call, but I was uh, in a G or a two-tag. Center came to me. Um, I had an inside, inside stunt. Center came to me. Um, I read that it wasn't a uh, run, so I was able to rip through and get through the uh, center. I was able to bend the edge and ultimately get up to uh, Matt Ryan. I mean, you don't sound like a rookie when you're you're going back over that play. And You said mentally understanding scenarios is where you've grown the most. So what has aided in your mental growth on the field this much this season? Uh it's a lot that goes into that. Um, so, you know, like I said earlier, just leaning on the older guys that have come before me and uh, watching a bunch of film, a ton of film, just learning football overall. So if you're able to learn that little stuff, um, it'll take you a long way. It'll make the game a lot slower for you. You said this week you don't have many personal goals for the rest of these two games this season. The personal goals, they'll come when this team is winning. So going up against Seattle Seahawks, uh, t- taking on some big names. What's the big emphasis going here into week 17? Uh, the big emphasis is to ultimately win. And it starts with the small thing, stopping the run. Uh, you know, up front, that's our job. We're going to stop the run, stop the run, get them to start passing the ball. And that's when we start getting to the quarterback, uh, start putting pressure on them, you know, start forcing throws and stuff like that. So we just apply as much pressure as we can. And that starts with stopping the run first and being able to get to the quarterback. Your rapping career, your singing career, you just released a song. You released an EP about a month ago. So where is this all this musical talent coming from? Uh, that's funny. I get it from my dad, actually. Um, growing up, he used to he was DJing and stuff at the house just for, like, for fun. Whenever it was uh, the weekends or something, he wasn't doing nothing. I mean, my little brother used to go in there and DJ with him. and We would rap over some of the beats and stuff like that. And music is really just a hobby, something fun to do when I don't have nothing else to do, really. And um, I don't really take it serious, but I like doing it a lot. So that's why I just drop music and stuff like that. It's really just for me to hear. And, you know, other people hear it all the time, too. But I just like hearing it for myself, honestly. If the people want to listen to you, where can they find you? I'm on Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud. Um, There's a link tree in my Twitter and my Instagram bio. So they'll be able to click on that and find all the different uh, platforms that I'm on. Any stage name or is it is it Lee McNeil? Could you go to Dancing Teddy Bear or Twinkle Toes? <laughs> nah, not for the stage name. Uh, the stage name is Dream. I got that nickname in high school, actually, from my uh, – he was our defensive coordinator, coordinator Coach Bellissimo. I remember the day I was walking down the hall, walking past his classroom. Uh, I don't know where I was – I think I was going to lunch or something like that. And he was like, Lee McDream, and that was the first time I heard it. And ever since then, he started calling me that. Then I made it my social media handles, and um, all the NC State fans started calling me that, and then teammates started calling me dreams. So I was just like, why not? I'll just put it as a dream. Rory's Cub Club registration is back open for the 2021 season. Get your children in the official Detroit Lions fan club for kids up to age 14. Each Cub Club registration comes with a membership kit filled with one-of-a-kind Detroit Lions items, plus exclusive events and ticket discounts. Visit DetroitLions.com slash Cub Club to sign up now. And it's the moment everyone's been waiting for. DetroitLions.com writer Mike O'Hara gives us his bet MGM pick. Mike, what are you thinking today? Well, Danny, I'm doing my part of the podcast today from a re- remote location it must be the holiday or something like that but you know when you really look at it this game the, the lions at the, at the C- seattle seahawks it just seems the two teams are in such different places and, and it's just kind of a weird feeling to it they trade lions at 212 and one that's two two wins one tie 12 losses it feels like everything they're doing is building for the future the seattle seahawks five and ten and the wrecking ball is coming 
And I guess that's just a product of what the success they had for so long, for almost a decade. In nine previous seasons, they had eight playoff appearances, nine winning records, and won a Super Bowl. And really, just for one of the really memorable teams in the history of the National Football League with the Legion of Boob and all those personalities. But, you know, we move along, and look, it has not been a good year by any measure for the for the Seahawks in any way. They're still going to be a tough opponent for the Detroit Lions. They've got speed on offense. They've got productive players on defense. Uh, but the facts are the facts. Uh, they have not been above 500 since they started the season 1-0. And then midseason, uh, Russell Wilson, their Hall of Fame to be quarterback, hurts his hand, misses three games, and really hasn't been himself since then. All you got to do is look at the stats. He had 40 touchdown passes last year. He has 18 now. I'm not laying their problems all on Russell Wilson. It's just a reflection of where they are and who he is and one of the most valuable players in any franchise has had in a long, long time. Detroit Lions, we're looking at who's going to play today. We're expecting, based on what the head coach Dan Campbell said in our last media session, that DeAndre Swift will be back after missing four games. Uh, Tim Boyle probably started a quarterback for the third time of the second straight season. Second straight start, I should say, that season. Um, and, you know, still with some other problems, juggling people because of COVID and injuries. Uh, Josh Reynolds, the wide receiver, who's been really a, really an asset for this team since he was signed. Uh, first wasn't going to play, now it looks like he's going to play. But, you know, look, we'll, we'll see that at kickoff time. Probably a guy to keep your eye on. Uh, obviously, with the, the rookie uh, wide receiver for the Lions, Amon Ross and Brown, 74 catches for the season. The uh, offensive rookie of the month for December, what a player he's become. Nothing but a bright future ahead of that kid. Terrific wide receiver, runs great routes, and not only that, he blocks like a demon uh, downfield. Reminds me of Brett Caravan for people who covered the Detroit Lions back in the 90s. The toughest blocking wide receiver I've ever covered in my life, Amon Ra. St. Brown reminds me of Brett Perriman to a, to a degree. Uh, be a good game for the Detroit Lions to win one on the road. They're up against it. Danny, you always ask me who I'm going to pick, and I'll have to close out right now with my pick. Another close one, the Seattle Seahawks 27, Lions 23. Close again. Become a Lions season ticket member today and gain access to the most favorable seating locations at Ford Field, exclusive member events, discounts on Lions merchandise, and personalized account service. Secure your seat today. Call 313-262-2222 or visit DetroitLions.com to learn more. Thanks so much for listening to The One Podcast. I'm Danny Rogers. We'll see you next week for Week 18.